Okay, this tutorial is more of a video companion to a blog post that I had published previously on this very same topic of adding Google Web Fonts to Active Campaign. However, in that blog post, I didn't go into detail on the process of actually getting those Google Web Fonts in the first place. So I'm going to include that part at the very beginning today. So first of all, we're going to go to the page for Google Web Fonts or Google Fonts as, as they're called. And I'm already there, but I'm going to include the link in the description just in case. For this particular example, we're going to use a font called Playfair. And there are just two versions. I'm going to use this one, Playfair Display. Click on it. And I'm presented with all the different um, versions of that font family. Regular, medium, bold. For this uh, example, we're going to use bold. We're going to keep it simple. Just going to use one uh, version of it. So click on select this style. And this slide uh, sidebar is uh, sliding sidebar is going to come from the right. And you're going to be presented with these uh, snippets of code. This is not really see any code, but more of a link that you can insert into your um, email to reference that font here in Google web fonts. And this is the CSS rule that you'll need to use for that particular font or any time that you want to use it throughout your email. So keeping that in mind, we need to grab this link down to here, copy and paste into active campaign. And I'm going to show you what needs to be done in active campaign next. Okay, and provided that you already have an active campaign account and you know how campaigns are created, we're going to save some time and go straight into the email editor for a dummy campaign I created. Now, in order to add that link that I showed you previously from the Google Web Fonts page, you need to use a block uh, from the email editor called HTML block. And um, there are several email uh, providers that have this type of uh, block in their email editor. One that I can think of right now is MailChimp. Um, and you could be, you could use this technique just as well in MailChimp. S actually following a similar process inside the editor. So let's just follow along here. We're gonna drag this block all the way to the top right however to save time i had already created one right there so when you, we click on it you'll see that i already pasted the link for the um, the font in here now you also have to define a um, css class for the um, uh, headings, meaning that you need to tell Active Campaign that you're going to use this Google Web Font for all these styles H1, H2, H3, H4, all the way down to H5. And once you have pasted that, and again, I'm going to uh, put the link in the description for the blog post that has all these um, snippets ready for you to grab them and paste them onto your email. However, you'll have to change the font depending on what font you're going to use. Now, so you just have to hit save changes here and that's going to save that code in there. Now let's go ahead and remove this because we're not going to use it. Yes. 
Now, the only issue here is that in Active Campaign, you really don't have specific um, settings for headings. You pretty much have to create them yourself. The, essentially, it allows you to be more flexible with um, how you style your headings. Now, for adding a heading that has the custom font, you need to do pretty much the same as you, we did for the um, um, the link to the web fonts. You have to use an HTML block and drag it into the body of the email. Again, to save time, I had already done that and put it here. So every time you need to use a heading, you need to include the um, CSS for that web font, as you see defined here, and wrap that that line of text with this um, class definition for um, heading two. Again, in the description, there's going to be the link to the blog post that includes all the snippets, so you can copy them to your heart's content. And as you can see um, in the editor, it renders in real time what the font is going to look like. And this is essentially what the font is going to look like um, on your web browser. Uh, keep in mind that these um, fonts at the time do not render in all email clients. In fact, um, they're only available in very uh, in, in a very limited number of email clients, such as iOS, Mail, G, um, Google Mail, but not the app, just regular mail in, in, on your phone, um, uh, the regular phone mail app on your Android phone. And, and there are other ones, Thunderbird is another one, Outlook for Mac, not for Windows, for Mac also renders. Uh, these type of fonts, uh, but that's that's about it. The list is pretty limited. So whenever you're considering using uh, these web fonts, make sure that you do an audit of your list distribution list and see, statistically speaking, what percentage of email clients um, in in that list, because you can get uh, those statistics from your email marketing platform. See what. Um, email clients are opening your emails and if that percentage of opens come comes from those email clients that I mentioned then by all means use these fonts if not you're probably best uh, to stay away from them okay that's um, the end of this video as I mentioned before um, all the links um, sorry the link for the blog post is going to be included so you can use the uh, snippets of code that I created for this particular example. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and uh, like this video. Thank you.